Data science is a video game. Here is how to win it. I'm a data scientist working for an eight-figure tech company and I used to play lots of games and still do sometimes. When I started to gamify my skill set and my work, everything became easier and more enjoyable. Because just like video games, data science has clear goals, scoring, skills, tokens like revenues or money in a game, taking care of your characters and also all the obstacles that you face in order to upscale and get to the next level. So let me show you how I gamify my data science work. We're gonna discuss three major steps on how you can gamify your data science journey. Remember that this can be applied to any industry you operate in and even if you work as a data analyst, data engineer and even other expertise you can still adjust this to fit your own purpose but for today's video we're going to talk about how to gamify data science and you will see that three major steps you see the first one on the left i've put the tnt logo in there which means that one we should more avoid it and we're going to see right now what it is so the first one is tutorial hell what is tutorial hell we all know it as data scientists data analysts we know how long we've spent watching YouTube videos. I've been there. I used to watch plenty of courses, go through 10 hours of courses. But then when I needed to do the thing, I found myself that I didn't know how to do it. Yes, I saw how people do it, but I didn't mean that I knew how to reproduce it myself. And that's the tutorial hell or the tutorial trap. Different people call it different things, but we can agree that just watching things without taking action is very harmful for your journey. And this applies whether you're just starting out or whether you're more advanced in your journey. Usually, over the years, you understand that the real power of gaining experience is by doing the thing and not watching someone doing it for you. So yes, there is always a space and a place for tutorials, but only if you do more hands-on with it. So why do we even fall in that tutorial hell? It's because we fear of missing out, because we see so many cool courses, so many cool tutorials, each one saying that we need to know that new library, that new tool, and that's just a fear of missing out. So like, I need to know all these things, but it's not true. Usually you're paid to deliver value on certain things. It doesn't mean you need to know everything. As long as you know what's needed from you, then obviously you can expand and on your own free time, you're free to read, watch and do whatever. But if the purpose is to upskill, then it's always better to take your time on the things that matter and not fear of missing whatever tutorials or whatever new tool is getting out there. Then we have fear of taking action. Because we fear all the bugs that we're gonna encounter and all the difficulties, we end up not doing the thing and just watching people doing it. And that's really bad because as a data scientist, you're a problem solver. You're not someone that will just watch tutorials. You're someone that will really make an impact on a business. And if you don't get your hands dirty, you'll end up not delivering value and you will end up harming your opportunities and the potential that you might have helping other companies and clients. And the third one, this is definitely me and I'm talking to myself here first, is thinking you are productive when you're not. You know, when you start a course of 15 hours and you go through it like two, three hours every day, you watch you're like, whoa, I've done 15 hours of courses within five days. But how much of it did you spend really doing hands-on? How much did you really spend trying to understand one or two concepts on a deeper level, not just on a superficial tutorial level? The thing that you need to understand is that most tutorials, they only cover basic things. They cover things that are quite easy to do. When you encounter tutorials and hands-on projects, you usually see that the creator or the teacher, they choose a data set or some data that is quite easy to manipulate. And why is it the case? Because they don't want to spend 25 hours debugging, cleaning the data, dealing with all the mess, because no one will watch 25 hours of a tutorial. They'd rather watch something of 45 minutes or one hour. So obviously they can only pick and choose things that are quite straightforward to work with. But in real life, it's more than that. So please leave tutorial hell and I'll show you exactly a few things on how I did to go through it. So how to quit tutorial hell? First, set learning objectives. If you set a goal to learn SQL and to learn Excel, focus on these. No need to start jumping into R, into Python, into some new stuff. You set SQL or SQL and Excel, focus on these until you feel like you're good enough, you did good practice, then move on. Second, set a timer. It's either a timer when you're sitting and learning 
or a timer when you just decide of a deadline. You say, okay, within the next two weeks, I'm fully focused on SQL. Within the next two weeks, I'm fully focused on Excel. This sets the tone on how you're gonna learn and how much time you're gonna spend. You just create like a fictional or fictive deadline so that it gives you a little bit of an urge to sit and study and do a lot of hands-on. And the third point, which comes naturally, is do way more hands-on than you watch tutorials. And I've got a really good rule of thumb is that whatever you watch in tutorials or reading, do three times that time in hands-on. So if I watch one hour tutorial, I'll do three hours of hands-on. And number four, this is the best one, is work on projects. Let's say you want to learn SQL, you'd rather go find a database and start querying directly from something that exists so that you can emulate what exists in real life and in the professional world. You don't want to just stay in the tutorial hell, you want to do things that exist and that can have an impact and that can showcase value of your expertise. Second major step of gamifying data science is called mechanics of data science. And those mechanics of a great data scientist are add value to the business. Remember, you're not just someone that writes code in the dark, you're someone that adds value to the business. And as long as you think, okay, how can I make sure that whatever I deliver, whatever I analyze, whatever machine learning model that I build, how can it really impact the business or the clients? And if you see that there is value in it, then spend time working with it. I saw a lot, especially in those that create reports and dashboards, data analysts in general, they focus a lot on designing and reporting whilst neglecting really what's the purpose of the analysis in the first place. So don't be like that. Always think of value because as Jim Rohn said, you're paid for the value you deliver. Revenue is directly linked to the value that you deliver. And the more value you give, and the more revenue you can get over time. Second, become a problem solver by nature. And this one correlates with the first point where if you manage to solve problems, you get paid for it. This is a business mindset, but it can be applied also in data science. Number three is focus on impact. And what I mean by this is we tend to sometimes overcomplicate something that could have been simplified and we end up making some reports that are 10, 15 pages long when they could be just two, three pages or sometimes we end up trying to explain some complex code to someone that is not technical. So these things are harmful for data scientists because you have to be strong technically, but you have to be also able to explain things in a very simple manner to non-technical people. So that's a skill to work on. And last one is communicate effectively. You need to be able to communicate your findings in a very self-explanatory manner and you just show the impact of your work, whether it's for technical people, non-technical people, clients, team members, you need to be able to communicate effectively what you do. The third one is level up. And this is how all this come into place, is how you're gonna level up in your data science journey. So the main tools that you're gonna work with, and this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but you need to define the ones that you're working on yourself. You'll see maths and statistics, Obviously, the foundations of data science are based in mathematics and statistics. You have Python or R, you have SQL, Excel, and everything for machine learning deployment, which is MLOps. And you will have everything related to containerizer, to containers, to CI CD pipelines, to deployment, to fast APIs, working in the cloud, deploying in the cloud, all these things. There are so many you need to focus on one or two that you want to upskill in and give them your full focus. Also, there is not only the technical skills, there's also the soft skills, and these are crucial. You will see a lot of senior data scientists, they're great by their soft skills, the way they communicate, the way they report, the way they add and showcase value, and also how they understand the business. As you can see there, business understanding. Those are very valuable. So yes, focus on technical, but also focus on soft skills. So how can we make sure that we are heading in the right direction? So what is your current data science score? So what you can do is to go back into our eight categories in here. Obviously you can add a few if you want and give yourself a score from one to 10 on each one of them. And then what you can do, if we take on an example in here, what you can do, is add them up. You can see on the left is quite small, but you can see 
6 out of 10, 7 out of 10 per each category. You can add them all up and then divide by 8, the number of categories, and multiply by 10 so that you can get a percentage. And you'll see, for example, here I have a 60% score and I know the things that I'm lacking. For example, these days I'm working more on ML Ops. So I'll be working on those. I'll pick one or two, study them, do hands-on, and then come back and update. I'll be like, I went from three out of 10 to six out of 10 within one month. And that's how you gamify your progress. Always think of, okay, how can I upscale in certain things? No need to rush into choosing everything and trying to upscale everywhere because that doesn't work. But just making sure that this is more of a game. Think of each challenge as just a way for you to upscale and not dreading the challenge and keeping watching tutorials and not taking on action. And if you wanna see me working on a football data science project end to end, I made a video that I will link in the description below or just here somewhere where you can see me going through the flow, how I scrape the data, explore, clean, analyze, do machine learning modeling all in one video. And I have a few others on my channel that you can go and explore. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to like it and subscribe to the channel. More than 60% of you are not subscribed yet to the channel. So it'll be a massive help if you can do so. Thank you for watching.